Tanya Teche, Transformational Psychology Coaching. Back to our regularly scheduled deprogramming. We're going to brainwash ourselves, right? Okay. So today what I'd like to talk about is something, well, you might, you might be familiar with something called the shadow. Uh, Carl Jung, he's a pioneer in psychology, just freaking brilliant. Okay. And he came after Freud. He was, I believe, Freud's student and they worked together. And then he, you know, he just pioneered left and right in psychology. And um, one of the principles he talks about, one of the things he uh, teaches is um, the shadow. So I'm going to uh, share about the shadow. You might have heard about our shadows. Um, our shadows is like, you know, it's almost like on the school on the school grounds, right? I know you are, but what am I? I know you are, but what am I? That's pretty much it. That's it. That's it. The kids, the kids have it right. Um, it's basically when someone accuses you of what they're doing. It, when someone accuses you of what exactly they're doing or exactly who they are. So, um, I mean, don't you just love that? There are some people who are really like really good at that too. That's all they do is accuse you of what they're doing or who they are. And, um, you know, like with a straight face, they'll, they'll basically just tell on themselves what they're doing. Um, and that's called projection. That's the projection of their shadow. The shadow is what you don't want to, well, sometimes it's what you haven't even named about yourself. Like you don't even know, you don't even know that about yourself. Um, but it's like what you, you, you don't own. I mean, if you haven't named it, you certainly don't own it, but it, it, you don't own it about yourself and you push it out onto someone else. Um, so it's, it's, it's the Jungian term for technical term for what we have to yet see, hear, name, and understand about ourselves. Uh, and it's very, it's a very human thing to do here on earth school. Like that's what we do. Some of us more than others. Um, so there's that. And then there's also, you know, when you start to become aware of this and you start to notice when you're doing it, not only when others are doing it, but when you're doing it as well, you can start to just like the yogis talk about this too. When you're naming something about someone else that is within you, and then you can go overboard. You could go overboard and start owning everything about anything you see negative with any situation or person and you can just think that's, you know, you're projecting. So then you get to a point where you have to bring discernment in and say like, oh no, I'm not projecting here. I really, this is not okay for me. This is a boundary here. I'm really not going to do this. I'm really, you know, that's enough for me. But let's just stay, let's just stay with projection for now um, before you get to the tipping point and you have to discern whether it's true projection or whether it's you and you're naming a boundary on your uh it's a good thing because that it, it can be a good thing in that way. Um, so let's just stay when it's, when it's brand new and it's, um, quote unquote, a negative thing. Um, so we go running around in our school and we, you know, project all sorts of things onto others. And, um, there's something, there's an aspect of this though, that you might not have heard of. And that is, um, the good stuff, projecting the good stuff. That's, that's called the golden shadow. When we project all types of our quality, our good qualities, like trustworthiness or honesty um, or caretaking, you know, nurturing, when we project those out onto people that don't necessarily deserve them. So there's that aspect of it too right? So sometimes caring, considerate, nurturing, codependence, like anyone, anyone codependent in this joint, um, can, can project their wonderful qualities out onto others that don't have them, that didn't earn it, right? So, you know, you can project your integrity, your goodness, your loving approach out onto others. And it's dangerous. It can be dangerous to project your good qualities all willy nilly out there um, to people who, who don't have them or didn't earn it. Like, you know, vulnerability is a strength. Um, sharing your feelings, sharing, you know, your perspective, being vulnerable is a strength. 
but only with the people who have earned it. There, there's a good reason there's fear of vulnerability, of being vulnerability and, and you know why it, like it's been seen as weakness before. Because if you do it with the wrong person or people, it, it can be dangerous. So projecting a good quality that you have, like honesty or trustworthiness or integrity out onto a person who's not, be aware of that as well. It's important to own and associate into your good qualities and, and own them as your own um, and realize that they're your own um, and not give the store away, you know, as the saying goes. And I, and this is what is meant by, in the Bible, when it says, do not throw your pearls before swine. This is it. Do not throw give give the store away. Be discerning about who you're attributing to have these amazing qualities um, because you could be projecting your amazing qualities out onto others. And that's the golden shadow. Um, okay, so all this practice of discerning, what gets to happen then is you, it gets easier and easier to sift through um, who's trustworthy and good and in integrity most of the time, you know, like you. Um, so, okay, um, this discernment also gets to be really useful when we're working on something I call healing suffering obligations of love and suffering obligations of love. I actually did a, I did a course on it. Um, I've done it a couple times and I'm revamping it now. So it'll be coming out. Um, suffering obligations of love are ways that we just, we suffer in, in an attempt to show loved ones that, that we're devoted to them and it's, it's, it doesn't work. Um, and so this, this discernment that you're going to cultivate is really useful in naming and upgrading the suffering obligations of love that we have as well. Um, I'm actually doing um, uh, and teaching it live um, at a retreat in Virginia for anyone that's local there. It's uh, August 4th through the 6th, and uh, I'll put a link to it. I'm, I'm doing a workshop there about suffering obligations of love. And it's hosted by my friend and colleague Jen, and um, I'll, I'll put the deets in the in the description. But so this discernment back to the shadow, the shadow, shadow, the dark shadow, the the, the bad stuff, you, you know, the, the the qualities you don't want, and also the golden shadow, the qualities that are amazing about you. Those the discernment that you cultivate, getting getting fluent in that, um, really helps when you when you get to the the uh step of upgrading your uh your suffering obligations of love okay so you're not bad and rotten and unworthy and useless and so stupid and such a loser um it doesn't have to be like that anymore and i invite you to stop going it alone so check out the description and reach out to me if you have any questions and I look forward to hearing from you and maybe seeing you in Virginia in person and have a beautiful rest of your day.